What happens to human consciousness when life ends? Is life's end the end of everything? These are questions that have intrigued humanity for centuries. Enter mathematical physicist Roger Penrose, a Nobel laureate for his work on black hole theory and a controversial figure for his belief in the existence of the soul. Penrose posits that the soul, in its death, sheds the human body and returns to the universe in a quantum form. As we ponder these questions, we must first understand what life is from a biological perspective. In the 13.8 billion years since the birth of the universe, life stands out as the most complex and mysterious of all creations. From the biological viewpoint, life is more than just cells, genes and DNA. It's an individual entity capable of growth, reproduction, metabolism and adaptation to changes in the external environment. It's an entity that can exchange matter and energy with the world around it and respond to stress. Now, it's easy to get caught up in the physical, tangible aspects of life. After all, we live in a world of matter, but to reduce life to mere materials would be a gross oversimplification. Cells, genes, DNA, these are all crucial components, yes, but they are not the be-all and end-all of life. At the heart of life, there lies something far more elusive and intangible. However, the core of life is not matter, but consciousness. Consciousness, like dark matter, remains invisible and intangible to us. Yet it is present in all life forms, varying in strength. Every organism, whether a simple bacterium or a complex human, harbors within it a spark of consciousness. This consciousness may be weak in more rudimentary life forms like plants and bacteria, but it is considerably stronger in complex animals. When it comes to us humans, the only advanced intelligent life form on this planet, our consciousness is not only potent but also cloaked in mystery and complexity. It is this consciousness that sets us apart, that makes us ponder our existence, question our reality and seek answers to the unknown. Yet despite our advanced consciousness, there are still secrets that remain hidden from us, aspects of our own consciousness that continue to elude our understanding. A living body is a combination of visible matter and invisible mysterious consciousness. Among those attempting to uncover the mysteries of life is Roger Penrose and his quantum soul theory. Penrose, a Nobel laureate physicist, boldly suggests that the soul exists. More intriguingly, he proposes that upon death, this soul doesn't vanish but returns to the cosmos in a quantum form. This quantum soul theory, though controversial, invites us to ponder the profound relationship between consciousness and the universe. As we continue to explore the mysteries of life and consciousness, we are left with more questions than answers, making the journey all the more intriguing. The soul does not perish. It's merely a quantum leap from the body to the cosmos. Pombus, a British mathematical physicist, was an intellectual peer and close associate of the legendary Stephen Hawking. His academic journey took him from the University of Cambridge to an honorary professorship at the University of Oxford. His groundbreaking concept, the starting point, redefined our understanding of the universe. Pombus's theorem, a theory that shook the scientific community, earned him the 2020 Nobel Prize in Physics. After the acclaim of the Nobel Prize, Pombus dared to venture into a topic considered taboo in the scientific community, the existence of the human soul. Pombus proposed a fascinating concept, the continuation of the human soul in quantum form. His book, Huang Di Lao delves into his views on this subject. He asserts that no matter how advanced artificial intelligence becomes, it will never match the intuition of an ordinary human being. According to Pombus, the human consciousness, or soul, is not a mechanized process, but a quantum system. He introduces the concept of electrons in an entangled state within our brains. These electrons, when collapsing, give rise to various thoughts and ideas, thus forming what we perceive as our soul or consciousness. In his words, artificial intelligence, no matter how advanced, will never match the intuition of an ordinary human being. And then Pombus delved into the metaphysical with a theory that resonated with age-old mythical concepts of the soul. His belief was that the soul does not vanish after death. Instead, it transcends our physical realm and returns to the universe in a quantum form. As esoteric as it might sound, Pombus's theory introduces a plethora of uncertainties to our understanding of the universe and the afterlife. Historically, the concept of the soul has sparked intrigue among scientists and philosophers alike. The earliest scientific foray into this realm 
was the sole weighing experiment conducted by Duncan MacDougall in 1901. MacDougall hypothesized that the soul, upon leaving the body after death, could be quantified by observing weight differences between the states of life and death. Despite the controversial nature of his experiment, MacDougall's work marked the beginning of a scientific quest to understand the soul. Fast forward to the present day, the scientific community remains divided on the existence and nature of the soul. Some adhere strictly to the principles of materialism, arguing that consciousness, or the soul, is nothing more than a complex arrangement of neurons firing in the brain. In contrast, Pombus's theory presents a quantum perspective, suggesting that the soul exists in a realm beyond our current understanding, perpetually entwined with the fabric of the universe itself. As Pombus's theories continue to stir debate and curiosity, one thing is clear. The journey to understand the soul and the universe is far from over, so dare to explore, question and learn more about Pombus and his theories. In 1901, Dr. MacDougall embarked on a controversial journey to answer them. He attempted to measure the weight of the human soul, using six patients on the brink of death. Despite the numerous criticisms and controversies that followed, his experiment set the stage for future inquiries into the existence and nature of the soul. Dr. MacDougall's experiment, now known as the 21-gram experiment, was nothing short of revolutionary. In the early 20th century, six patients were carefully selected for this unique study. They were placed on special beds over a precise measuring device. Throughout the experiment, a steady weight loss was observed, attributed to normal processes like respiration and perspiration. But then, something remarkable happened. There was a sudden, inexplicable loss of 21 grams. Could this be the weight of the soul? The subsequent experiments were less consistent, with weight fluctuations even after brain death. Critics were quick to point out these inconsistencies, suggesting metabolic changes or measurement errors. Despite its flaws, the experiment sparked a wave of interest and gave rise to the idea that the human soul might weigh 21 grams. Dr. MacDougall's work didn't end there, nor did the controversy surrounding it. He broadened his scope, studying animals, yet found no change in weight post-mortem. This led him to controversially conclude that only humans possess souls. Critics, however, offered alternative theories, suggesting the weight loss could be attributed to a sudden rise in body temperature at death. These arguments cast a shadow of doubt over MacDougall's findings. The question of the soul's existence remained open, but the quest for answers continued. Decades later, the baton passed to Soviet technician Kerian and his wife. They ventured into the unknown, focusing on the soul's nature, pioneering Kerlian photography to capture bioenergy fields. While the weight and existence of the soul remain topics of debate, the quest for understanding continues, fueled by curiosity and the enduring legacy of the 21-gram experiment. We've pondered over this enigma for centuries, dissecting it through religion, philosophy and even science. Enter Krotkov, a Western European scientist who amplified the Kirlian photography method in an intriguing experiment. His objective? To capture the elusive soul. His findings suggested that a blue hue, possibly the soul, departs from the human body during the process of death. But Krotkov's findings were not without dispute, casting a shadow of doubt over the existence of the soul. If the soul does exist, can it exist independently? This question has been at the core of scientific and philosophical debates for centuries. Many scientists, including physiology and medicine Nobel Prize winner Francis Crick, argue that the soul, or consciousness, cannot exist on its own. Crick proposed that consciousness is a unique phenomenon that forms during the growth of the human brain, suggesting that the soul is intrinsically linked to our physical existence. The debate about the existence and nature of the soul continues to this day. Could the mysteries of the soul be revealed in the brink of death? Near-death experiences, a state of suspended animation on the cusp of life and death, may hold answers. Through countless interviews, scientists have observed striking similarities in these experiences worldwide. Patients often report sensations of floating outside their bodies, reliving past memories, or even meeting departed loved ones. But why are these experiences so universal? And what do they tell us about the soul? The phenomenon of near-death experiences brings us closer to understanding the soul, yet leaves us with more questions. Could the soul be immortal, living on after death? 
Pondering this question, Pombos proposed an intriguing theory. He suggested that the soul, in essence, is a form of quantum substance. According to this perspective, upon departing the physical body, the soul doesn't cease to exist, but instead returns to the vast expanse of the universe. This concept breathes life into the possibility of the soul's immortality. While the quest for understanding the soul continues, one thing is certain, the soul, whether real or imagined, remains one of life's greatest mysteries. Consciousness. Delve into the world of quantum mechanics where a concept known as quantum superposition states comes into play. This idea, fascinating and complex, is the simultaneous existence of a quantum particle in multiple states. Intriguingly, it bears a remarkable resemblance to the nature of our consciousness. In the year 1994, Harvard University unveiled the results of a groundbreaking study. They uncovered the existence of microtubules, structures akin to tiny wires distributed extensively among the neurons in our brain. These microtubules, they discovered, share the same properties as quantum superposition states. This intriguing discovery suggests that our consciousness, often believed to reside solely in our brain, might also exist somewhere within the vast expanse of the universe. So, is it possible that our consciousness, or soul, exists in a quantum state, both here and elsewhere in the cosmos? Now, let us delve deeper into the idea of consciousness as a quantum entity. Bloomberg and Kamarov, esteemed researchers in the field, proposed the theory of coordinated objective reduction. This theory suggests that our consciousness exists as a quantum mentality within the brain's microtubules. Upon death, these microtubules lose their quantum state, but the quantum information isn't destroyed. Instead, it ventures into the infinite expanse of the universe. Imagine, if you will, the near-death experience. When the microtubules regain their quantum state, the lost quantum information, like a homing pigeon, returns to the brain. It's during these moments that individuals report extraordinary near-death experiences. Could these experiences be the quantum consciousness's fleeting journey into the cosmos? If our consciousness does journey to the universe after death, does it mean that our soul truly is immortal, forever wandering the cosmos? The very essence of our being is not simply a product of brain activity. This is the intriguing question that has puzzled philosophers and scientists alike for centuries. Traditionally, the soul and consciousness have been viewed as ethereal constructs, separate from our physical existence, yet inherently tied to it. But the existence of such concepts has never been universally agreed upon. Enter the objective reduction theory, which suggests the soul and consciousness may be the result of quantum processes within the brain. But this theory, later dubbed the quantum soul, has sparked considerable controversy. Some in the scientific community have dismissed it as nonsense, while others firmly believe in its potential validity. While some dismiss these theories as mere conjecture, others see them as a glimmer of truth in the enigma that is human consciousness. Imagine, if you will, a universe not just around us, but within us. A universe of 11 dimensions, as proposed by Edward Witten, with our consciousness as a projection from a higher dimension. This multi-dimensional universe theory suggests that the world we live in is but one facet of a much larger, more complex reality. Our human existence, in its three-dimensional space, is merely a projection of something far more profound. Our consciousness, our very soul, might be a visitor from this higher realm, making its journey into our dimension. This concept challenges our understanding of the soul and consciousness, breaking the boundaries of traditional thought. It implies that our consciousness, rather than being an isolated phenomenon, is a part of a cosmic interplay across multiple dimensions. If this is the case, our souls might be visitors from a higher realm, here on a cosmic mission. But why would these projections from a higher dimension choose to inhabit our three-dimensional world? What purpose could this possibly serve? One intriguing suggestion is that our consciousness may not simply be a personal attribute, but a cosmic law, integral to maintaining the fundamental operation of the universe. This concept elevates the role of consciousness from a mere byproduct of human brain activity to a universal function, a guiding principle that steers the cosmos. This theory also brings to mind the ancient concept of reincarnation, a natural law that upon death, the soul leaves the body to begin a fresh life. Could it be that this cycle of death and rebirth is not just a spiritual belief but a cosmic necessity? A method employed by the universe to ensure its continuous operation, 
with our consciousness serving as the vehicle for this perpetual motion. If this theory holds true, then every end is merely a new beginning for our consciousness. What if the fear of death could be mitigated by the understanding of our consciousness? Imagine a world where the end of life is not a final curtain but a transition, a shift from one state of being to another. These theories suggest a paradigm shift in our perception of life and death. Our consciousness, or what some may call the soul, may not perish, but simply return to a higher dimensional plane, ready to embark on a new journey. This prospect of cracking the mystery of consciousness could lead us to a profound understanding of life and potentially the mastery of immortality. A departure from the mortal coil might not signify an end, but rather a new beginning. The implications are vast and deeply transformative. As we delve deeper into the enigma of consciousness, we may stumble upon truths that could redefine our existence. As we continue to unravel the mysteries of the universe, we may find that the answers we seek lie within ourselves. For in understanding our consciousness, we may just unlock the secrets of life itself.